biblical basis. James chapter 1 and beginning in verse 17, and we'll read down also to verse... Actually, we'll just read verse 18. I'm going to speak this morning on the ultimate of fathers. The ultimate of fathers. Let's read together verse 17 responsibly. James 1, 17, begin. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. The ultimate of fathers is good. And as an example, each of us as fathers need to look to our Heavenly Father as the example of goodness. God gets blame for an awful lot of bad. But the fact of the matter is, it's not our Heavenly Father that is responsible for that. It is our earthly father generations back by the name of Adam who took the fruit and decided that he knew best and did something sinful. And because of that, <clears throat> unfortunately, we as fathers today do not always have the propensity to do good. Our reset is bad. You say, well, I try to do good. Well, the fact is, is we're human. We're sinful. And the wonder of our Heavenly Father, the Father of lights, is He's always good. There's an expression in Scripture that speaks of God as the good Lord. Um, that's exactly who it is, who He is. Um, you can say this statement forward and backward, and it means the same. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. There is nothing you have good in life that does not come from God. Let me say that again. There is nothing good that you have in life that does not come from God. You say, well, well, I'm a self-made man. Um, every I, I heard that statement made by one of my niece, one of my cousins about her dad um, because that's what they thought he was. But the fact of the matter is nobody is self-made. We all are a composite of our upbringing. We're composite of our parents. And we don't give life. We have a Heavenly Father who is the author of life. And were it not for Him, our heart would not beat. We would not breathe the proper amount of breaths every moment. We would not have the physical capability to get out of bed and to go to work. We would not have the mind that we have to allow us to think and to be able to be successful and to be good at what He has chosen for us to do. So there is no self-made man. Our very life that we have all comes from God Almighty. And so we should, we, we as as men, as fathers, should try to mirror the goodness of our Heavenly Father. Go to Luke chapter 11, the book of Luke chapter 11. Um, this, the context of this speaks of having uh, the Spirit of God on, on our lives. And that happens when a person trusts Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit comes inside and He indwells us becomes a part of our life. I want you to look at verse 11. Luke chapter 11 and verse 11. It says, And if a son, or if a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish 
give him a serpent? Or if he asks, shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? You know, in the deviant mind that some men have, it, that's very, maybe it, it's possible. But if, if you offered any of those alternates to what the son, your son asked you, you would be evil. Verse 13 says, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit? And there's another verse which co corresponds with this. It says, Give good things to them that ask Him. Everything that we have that is good, the Bible says, comes from above. Comes from God. Because men who are not saved, don't know God, cannot give in the way God gives. God gives when we don't deserve it. He is gracious. We give conditionally. God is merciful. Uh, God withholds things, doesn't give us things, consequences, judgments, things that we could have because he's a merciful God. He's a merciful Heavenly Father. So everything that God is, he gives and we receive as a child of God. And so fathers, that's who we need to be. He gives us truth. He gives us hope. He gives us peace. He gives us joy. He gives provision. He gives guidance. He gives truth. The list could go on and on and on. There wouldn't be time today to finish the message if we went into every good thing God does for us as his children. And so as fathers, men, that's what we need to think about when we are with our kids. That's what we need to think about as a father. That we are the image, we, we, we mirror him. The Bible tells us this, and this is, a, this is a directive, it's a command. Be ye therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. And so that means that we are to be like our Heavenly Father as dads in the home. It's a tall order. But it's what we are supposed to do as fathers. Men are to set the tone in the family. The Bible speaks of husbands as, the, the, actually the term husband means house band. It's two words. It, and so what it, the idea is, is that the husband binds the family together and holds the family together. I, I've heard the expression, well, my wife is like the thermometer in the home. Guys, shame on you. Shame on me. My wife should not have to set the tone with my kids. I should set the tone with my kids. And so as a father, it's, it's, if we look to God and we look at how he ran it, he runs his, his household, he runs the, the children of God, his, his children and how he interacts with them, that is how we are to be in the home. Some other characteristics about God. First, everything that he is, uh, everything he gives is good. Everything he does is good. And your kids need to see that goodness in your life. And he's perfect. And so we, we need to strive for perfection. We need to strive for excellence. We need to strive to do our very best as a dad to be what we ought to be. But then he, he says this. It says, it, come, it cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning and the idea is 
how light comes. That, that term, within, with whom is no variableness, relates to deviation. God never deviates from who he is and who he, who he should be. But if you think about it, then how often do we deviate from what we should be and what we know we could be, but we don't? That's why we look to God as our consummate example. Because you, he's consistent. He's always the same. And everything he does, he does calculated and planned and perfect. He's not willy-nilly. It's excellent. It's always good. And that's what we should strive for. The Bible gives expressions. Whether they, what, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. That's God. That's who he is. He is not asking us to do anything as a father that he does not do himself. Just look at the world he made. Yes, men have tainted it. We've, we've destroyed a lot of it. But God made it perfect. In fact, in creation, at the very end, it says, God looked upon all that he had made and it was very good. Not just good, very good. And so God never deviates from who he is. He never deviates from his character. He never deviates from what he does, his goodness. And so we need to keep that as a reset in our life with our family, with our children. How sad when a child looks back on their deceased parents and they can't remember a father who was good. I'm always conscious on Father's Day or Mother's Day of people who did not ever have an example. That doesn't mean you can't make it because we have the ultimate of examples. And I try to encourage people, don't, don't not come to church because you didn't see that model, you know, and don't, don't skip out on a Father's Day or a Mother's Day. How are you going to, when, if you become a father or you become a mother, how are you ever going to learn how? How are you going to ever know? The fact is, none of us in this room are perfect men. None of us have done everything right. I know that's shocking, including myself, okay? It is not a shock at all because we were born in sin with a nature to do sin and the sad thing is, is we've made a lot of mistakes. But you know the wonder of God? He has forgiven us of all of those things. And he gives us at salvation a fresh start to, be, to, 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 de, to make things different. To go, pick up the pieces and to go on from here and to continue a different legacy, to continue a different atmosphere in a family and in a home and with your children. So first, he's good. Second, he's perfect. Third, he never deviates. He never deviates from his truth. He never de deviates from his mercy. He never de deviates from his love. He never de deviates from anything that he is. Then verse 17, it says, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. When a shadow is reflected, it changes light. And so the idea that is reflected in that last statement, with whom is no variable, is neither shadow of turning, what it means is he doesn't ever change. Now the fact is, that's a very difficult thing for us as men. Change. Being consistent. Modeling to your children who our Heavenly Father is. 
Did you know that children look to fathers and look to mothers and that that is the first education they have that helps them to get to know who God is? It is not the church. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people that think that the church is, is the first place where children should learn about God. And, and you know what? Church is a place where we all ought to learn about God. It's a place where we learn the scriptures and a place where we're taught. And that's wonderful. But we just have services Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And some churches don't even have that. But you have your children 168 hours in the day, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And of that time frame, depending on your church and depending on the, on the hours that they have services, it's a drop in the bucket compared to the time you have with your children. And so the very first look that any child child has to God is through mom and dad. So guys, wouldn't you want your kids to know you're good? When, you're, when you're, your children speak of you and when they talk of you, wouldn't you like it to be fond and to say, you know, my dad was, was always good to me. My dad loved me. My dad provided for me. He worked hard. I mean, he may, we may not have been wealthy, but, but all my needs were always met. I could count on the, the fact that my dad was, he was there. Good. Wouldn't you like to strive to be perfect or strive for perfection? You're not going to achieve it. I'm not going to achieve it. We know that. We won't be perfect until we see Jesus. He is going to make us perfect permanently then. We live in a sinful body. And at salvation, we're, we're saved, we're forgiven. And as far as God looks at us, we stand before Him perfect. But it won't be until we cross to the other side and we're in heaven that then we will be, we will be as, as He is. We will be perfect. But until then, we could sure be better than we are. We could strive, a, we, we, could, we could ask God to help us to strive a little more to be the perfect father. I had a sweet note sent from my, uh, my daughter, my oldest daughter today. It meant a great deal to me. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Don't ask me what it is. None of your business. But um, when you get things like that, man, and they, and they always come in times you're not expecting it. That's a nod of approval from God. You're doing okay. Keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing. We need to be good. We need to strive for perfection. And we need to teach our children excellence by how we do things. You know, so your kids may, may think, you know, Dad always made such a big deal. Always wanted it, and always wanted things done, you know, done a certain way. But it's funny when they get older; they seem to do the same things. My cousin, who we were down, I was down this past Monday. Went down to a funeral. Now this week seemed like a blur. Flew down Monday, came back Tuesday. And at the funeral, or actually, I'm sorry, after the funeral, I had, uh, we had a family gathering, had about, about uh, 30, 30, almost 40 of us, at two tables at a, something similar to like Mod Pizza, only it's called Pieology. It's kind of a different name. It was pizza, okay? All right? Pizza pie. And so we were, we were talking, and my cousin made the comment. He said, my father was a perfectionist, Nothing could be out of place. And he, and he was always clean and neat and tidy and everything just was, you know, had to be a certain way. And he said, when it's not, it drives me nuts because I'm like that now. And his wife was not from that background. 
and his wife was making some comments and I just grinned I didn't address it because that's who I am okay our father in heaven is perfect he demands a level of life that most of us don't demand we don't demand it of ourselves and we don't demand it of our children what do you want your children to become where do you want the bar to be set the bar should be set that we are never satisfied till we come to the measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ that's the measure and that only comes from knowing Jesus and so the goal of every father um, every father should be praying that God saves his children my wife and I, we made, this, made that covenant many years ago that we would lose no child. Every one of our children would come to Christ. We're very thankful. Keep the example. Keep praying. Keep living. Guys, keep the Heavenly Father before you. And don't be as this generation, such, so, so given to change. Just throwing all out, throw, throwing all the old out, and bringing in all the new, and forgetting who God is. God is perfect. God is good. He doesn't vary. He doesn't deviate though we do he, he never changes he's the same yesterday today and forever that's Jesus Christ the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace and if our children can look back and have at least a comment or two to say you know Dad wasn't perfect, but boy, he sure strove for it. And I love my dad. Nothing better than that. There really isn't. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, let's stand quietly together. If you can't.